Uh, kia ora koutou everyone, uh, Nisan Bulvinaka and welcome to each of you wherever you're joining us from. Uh, welcome along to another Digital Pacific Live session. My name is Tim Kong and I'm the Program Manager of the Pacific Virtual Museum Pilot. Uh, my role today is basically just technical administration uh, and to welcome you along uh, to our session today. We're focusing on um, the Pacific community uh, and in particular the team of fantastic librarians there. So I'm going to hand over to Tapatu who is our MC and host. Uh, for the rest of the session. Naka. Uh, Nisa Bolovanaka, bonjour, kia ora and kia ora ana. Uh, my name is Tapsu Kararae and I'm the engagement manager for the Digital Pacific website. Um, <clears throat> today I have the pleasure of hosting our Pacific community team. Um, we're going international today. Uh, we've got our our presenters in New Caledonia and also in Fiji. Um, and we are based in Wellington here in New Zealand. Um, before I share the agenda for today, I'd like to let our presenters introduce themselves, what their role is, and also where they're located. Um, Emily, would you like to start us off? Thanks, Taputu, and uh, kia ora koutou, uh, bula, bonjour. Um, my name is Emily Legg. I'm the Publishing Coordinator Team Leader at SPC, and um, that uh, essentially means I look after the publishing and library functions at uh, SBC. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Paraparo Umu, New Zealand, and I'm located in uh, <laughs> Numia, New Caledonia, uh, together with Stephanie. So I'll pass over to Stephanie to introduce herself. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Watt. I work at the Numia SPC Library with uh, Emily, and I'm originally from Vanuatu, France, and New Caledonia. Thanks. And Samuel, would you like to? Just... Yeah, good morning, everybody. And Mulevanaka, uh, this is uh, Samuel Anakalevo from uh, Sua Fiji. Um, I'm uh, here at the uh, SPC uh, library based in Suva. Uh, we are based, if you know Suva very well, we are based uh, in uh, Narere, on Narere campus. So that's why I'm uh, coming on live uh, from this morning. And I've been uh, with SPC uh, for um, about 10 years now. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you, team, for introducing yourself. So just want to give an overview of the agenda for today's webinar. Um, the three presenters will be sharing some of the resources and the background of Pacific community. Um, after their three presentations, I'll be sharing how you can access some of their digital resources from the Pacific Virtual Museum or the Digital Pacific website. Um, so if you do have any questions or comments, please put it in the Q&A chat or also in the Zoom chat. Um, if you are watching us through Facebook Live, just um, write your comments in the comment section and we will relay these questions um, to our presenters. So yeah, I think we'll just start our presentations now. Cool, Emily, would you like to start us off? Yeah, thank you very much. I'll just uh, share my screen with everyone. Sure can, yeah. Yep, all good, okay. Um, right, and um, before I start, uh, just to give a, a short overview uh, about the SPC library and about the digital library specifically, I wanted to thank the Digital Pacific team uh, for giving us this platform to, to talk about our resources and to promote some of the fantastic resources that we do have available in the SBC library. Uh, we're a very small team and sometimes that means that, you know, we, we spend a lot of time on ensuring uh, collection access and, and managing the collection on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so it's often difficult to, to find a platform uh, through which to promote our resources. And for that, we are very uh, thankful and grateful for uh, the Digital Pacific Platform for the initiative and the project. Uh, today, I just wanted to uh, give some of you an idea about what SBC is, what we do, and uh, why we are important to the Pacific region. Uh, we were established in 1947 as the South Pacific Commission, hence our uh, acronym SPC. But some of you might notice at the top here that our uh, official name uh, is actually the Pacific Community. This uh, ch has changed over the, the years. We are officially the Pacific Community, but our acronym remains SPC. 
Uh, SBC celebrates uh, 75 years uh, next year in 2022. And um, this is 75 years since we were established as part of the Canberra Agreement in 1947 uh, in the aftermath of World War II. Uh, our remit then and, and now remains the, uh, the use of, of scientific and technical knowledge and innovation to, uh, to help and to promote sustainable development in the Pacific region. Uh, and this has really remained, I think, um, the, the core of what we do at SPC uh, and has only strengthened over the last 75 years um, with some of the challenges that we face uh, in the region. The SPC library uh, was also established at the same time as SPC. So it is in fact, uh, or has in fact been there from the beginning and is an integral part of the Canberra Agreement. Um, which uh, gave birth to the organization essentially. We house the organization's uh, corporate memory and we were lucky enough uh, in 2015 to start using the digital library uh, and to be able to share some of this corporate memory uh, with people outside of SBC. Until then our, our collection had been largely physical and uh, so having the digital library available for all of SBC uh, from 2015 and for the fisheries collection from 2006 has been integral in sharing our resources across the region. Um, we also took that a step further in 2020 with the launch of the Pacific Data Hub, uh, which was a further step towards actually sharing the data that we are using in our science and in our technical work. Uh, and making it open source for the region. You can also locate our, all of our publications uh, and all of our resources via the Pacific Data Hub as well. So in what areas are, is SBC working in? Our focus areas uh, are listed here. Um, they've evolved over time, but they, they remain largely integral to the divisional and program work that we are doing uh, across the region. And here on the left, our former graphic artist, uh, Jipe, has, I think, very succinctly captured what it is that we're about. The people are at the core of SBC's work, and uh, all of our divisions and programs, from climate change to public health, support the work uh, towards uh, creating a, a more prosperous and a vibrant Blue Pacific continent. Um, more specifically, I'll just give you a few facts about our, our collections. You can see a couple of pictures there from our Numia library, uh, from our Numia campus. Um, we have the SBC special collection, which is uh, made up of about 40,000 records. Half of those uh, are available on the digital library. So um, Tabuta will show you at the end how you can access those through Digital Pacific. We also have the, the General Pacific Collection, um, which uh, houses a lot of our general Pacific resources, and then the Pacific D Collection, which uh, houses a lot of our, um, our special Pacific literature, um, a lot of literature that comes directly from picked countries and uh, has been deposited with SBC over time. Uh, we also have the GEM Library Collection, which makes up about 10,000 records and is based in Suva, Fiji. And then uh, the SBC Digital Library, which we are showcasing today. And finally, the Pacific Way um, uh, series, which you can link to on Digital Pacific via YouTube. Uh, I think in total, the SBC Library holds approximately 100,000 records. And uh, as any librarian would know, that includes uh, quite a significant backlog uh, of uh, Pacific resources. And we were very lucky this year to, to get extra help um, to help us start cataloging some of that backlog and getting it into our library collection. Um, that's all from me on, on the, the library itself. And I will pass over now to, to Stephanie, who will uh, give us the first uh, presentation on our resources. Thank you, Stephanie. Hello everyone, uh, thank you Emily, and I will uh, share my screen too now so you can see the resource I have chosen to present today for you all. So if... Mm. 
Yep. Oh, can everyone see it? Yeah, okay. So uh, I chose uh, the meeting house of the Pacific, which is in French, La Maison Commune du Pacifique. And I will, uh, I will explain uh, you why I chose this uh, very uh, special resource in our SPC collection. So let's go first uh, on the publish publishing side first. As we can see, it is a bilingual publication, English and French. And this shows that uh, SPC is a bilingual organization. The colors on the cover reflect SPC colors, blue and white. It was published by uh, SPC, of course. We can see uh, the logo here with the 26 stars, which represent the 26 country members of SPC. It's a color publication of 179 pages with bilingual text and illustrated with many photos. There was a research of archive photos for this special publication. And it's important to note this because all these photos actually come from our spatial collection hold in the library. So let me scroll down to some beautiful photos. So the CIP2 was uh, provided uh, by the library. And uh, why, we have, why have they decided to publish such a book? It was published actually for the 60 years anniversary of SPC. It illustrates perfectly why SPC is the meeting house of the countries in the Pacific region. And what makes it unique is that it's a complete collection of photos and stories that show what SPC has been working on for 60 years. Which means for any researcher or scientist, this book is a good source of information in history of the Pacific, international development and national development. But also I chose this book um, because it reflects perfectly the SPC vision for the region, which is a secure and prosperous Pacific community whose people are educated and healthy and manage their resources in an economically, environmentally and socially sustainable way. It also highlights SPC mission, which is to help Pacific Island people position themselves to respond effectively to the challenges they face and make informed decisions about their future and the future they wish to leave for the generations that follow. It is also important here to remind that the Pacific Community Library is a key component in SBC's provision of technical assistance and of its commitment towards its mission and values, including towards youth development, education, the protection of traditional knowledge and its own cultural and scientific heritage. For example, for instance, for the, concept, for the conception of this book, they have used photo archives of the library, information from our resources, and as you might guess, after it is published, it is held at the library for preservation on one hand and dissemination on the other hand. So we have come full circle. This demonstrates that the SPC library and its premises are also the only public space in the headquarters that allows visibility and communication of the work done by the organization for the last 74 years. In this book, we also learn how SPC was established. So let's go through some uh, history and some small stories of the SPC. And I would like to take you to the page um, 39, for example. Okay, so historically speaking, SPC was founded in Canberra with the Canberra Agreement in 1947, just after the Second World War. And the transfer to Numia took place in 1948. This was decided at the South Seas Commission Conference. In 1950, the commission decided to convene an, an advisory body called the South Pacific Conference in order to give chances to their possessions and trust territories to air their views in the new organization. So the commissioners set up the conference 
as a mechanism to allow islander consultation without involving them directly in SPC's decision-making processes. And in its yearly sessions of commissioners nominated by the funding metropolitan members, but they were not to know that as the Pacific changed, the conference would become the policy and decision-making body of the organization. Originally, the conference met every three years, but beginning from 1967, it met every year. In 1973, the South Pacific Commission and the South Pacific Conference decided to hold a joint conference every year, starting from 1974, retaining the name the South Pacific Conference. And in this book, I do like the quote of Sir Brian Friston, governor of Fiji and Western Pacific High Commissioner, who would soon become the second SPC Secretary General, described the gathering as a parliament of the South Pacific peoples. And he went on to observe, never before in the history of the world have the peoples of the South Pacific met together under one roof. This is here we are, the meeting house. And it gives uh, all sense to the title of this book. I think it's really important to highlight this because this is the very original spirit of the organization, to gather all countries of the Pacific, their values, their cultures, their customs. This is very important for ocean and people. And from page to page, while enjoying the photos, we can see that even the building of SPC, its architecture, have been inspired by special Pacific symbols. So I'm going now to take you to this special page, scrolling down slowly so you can see some photos. Here will be um, very uh, soon. I, voila, let's go like this photo. This is the building of the library. Okay, so let me uh, give you some examples uh, about these spatial Pacific symbols. So located at Ensvara Bay, our headquarters have been uh, in Numia since 1949, and the current building were established in 1995. As you can see, the curved line of the building architecture are used in traditional architecture across the Pacific region. All bridges which connect our various offices symbolically represent the communication between countries and territories in the Pacific. In the Pacific. And actually it was inspired by the uh, traditional Micronesian map of navigation. The library, the library building itself, which is open to the public, has the shape of an upside down canyon, a traditional Pacific boat on the water's edge, but why? why they wanted this symbol for the first building of the wall organization. Because this represents, this is the symbol of the arrival in the Pacific. Um, here is a photo, if I can show a better here on your left. Oh, where it is. Well, on your right now, maybe. Uh, here's a photo of the conference room. It can receive around 250 people. It was conceived with the help of different uh, member countries of the organization. And he had taken all important decisions regarding the Pacific community and its members. I'll just scroll down to some other photos. If well. On the photo on your left, you can see that in SPC, you can see that all flags of country members are displayed. And still, and again in the conference room, as you finally, as you can see, the layout of the tables and seats in circle perfectly reflects the ocean and spirit of consensus. So I'm going to take you to some other pages. Uh, 
okay, here. So reading this book, we can see that all along these years, the SPC has undergone a transformation. We are now operating with a new organizational structure, new priorities and a solid foundation of strategic objectives. This transformation has been a, a seen a change in atmosphere and attitude amongst the staff. This change has brought an environment of collaboration, willingness to try new things, and greater recognition of the specialized skills of staff. The result is an organ organization ready to move forward and cement itself as a regional institution that plays an important role in Pacific society and on the world stage. SPC has always focused on to diversifying its audiences, building the multicultural facet of its activity and raising its regional and international profile. Similarly, changes are rapidly occurring in the way the SPC interacts with our clients, audiences and stakeholders. New programs have been developed since this, like the Climate Change Division, Communication Division. New technologies have been embraced, new website, new social media tools, new publications and products have been considered and access to the collection have been expanded with the SPC Corporate Digital Library and recently the Pacific Data Hub. These changes impact a way we do business and importantly, the way we communicate to our stakeholders and market to our clients. So this is it for the presentation of this book, but I will end this presentation on a very uh, personal note. These books, as well as, as the organization itself, have inspired me to write the song, Oceania for the Pacific, because through this song, I wanted to highlight and honor the Pacific and its values and emphasize all the different Pacific languages, which are Melanesian, Polynesian, and Micronesian. So um, I could share with you all, if, you, if you're okay, the very uh, first music quotes uh, of, the, of this song. If if YouTube wants, of course. Mama, me call him you all Sam. Long God, you must turn up today. Hear me belong you. Mama, where who are I? We don't fail who are. No way, they That was it. <laughs> you can, uh, you can, uh, you can, you can find it uh, on YouTube. And I really take uh, this uh, moment to thank you all, and especially uh, the Digital Pacific team and uh, our manager Emily Leg to have given uh, us the opportunity to uh, give this presentation to you to you all. So thank you. And if you have any question, I'm ready. Okay, we've got one question for you, Stephanie. Yes. Um, so the acronyms that you mentioned at the start of your presentation. So um, P I C T P I C T S. Oh, and Pacific Pacific Island Country and Territories. Ah, yes. Six. And then C I P. What does that mean? Cataloging and publication Ooh, okay. data. <laughs> no hard questions coming through then. Um, I think yes. that, that was the only question that you had. So, <laughs> so you're, everyone's welcome to ask any more. 
Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. So I think that was all. Oh, the thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Awesome. Um, Samu, would you like to present your presentation? Yep, I'll go ahead. Okay. I'll just share my screen with everyone. Okay. Uh, uh, I've got uh, two uh, publications, uh, SPC documents that I want to share with everyone uh, today. Um, both publications are published by the Pacific Health uh, Division of SPC, uh, now moved over to SUVA. Um, uh, this is the second edition, the one that you can see on the screen, the Pacific Island Food Leaflets. Uh, the first edition was published in 2006, and this was in 2012. And there's another later edition that talks about the edible leaves of the Pacific, uh, which is my second publication, which was published uh, last year, again by our public health uh, division. So uh, this, uh, this uh, food leaflets, you know, as you can see on the cover here, you see food, you talk about the Pacific Islands, we love our food. Okay, so there's some um, 19 uh, leaflets uh, in total. Um, the contents of these leaflets for the 19 food um, that, um, that are presented in this leaflet are the same. And there's an introduction to the type of, um, of the food, the crop, whether it's uh, taro or yam or bananas or fish or guava or pandanas. Then it talks about the uh, major types of crop. For example, in taro, there are four major types of crop uh, in taro that's uh, relevant to the Pacific. Uh, its propagation, how is it um, uh, sustained in the Pacific, the uh, cultivation aspect of it. It even talks about the nutrition uh, content of these um, food items, uh, how they are prepared for cooking. Sounds nice, eh? And uh, it even talks about the recipes, the different kind of recipes that have been gathered. And there are other recipes that no uh, communities and families know how to cook their own uh, their food. The functional properties of these uh, food items, the storage and preservation in the Pacific, knowing fully well in the Pacific, mostly in our Pacific Island countries and in some villages in Fiji, um, getting a, a cooler is quite, um, is quite a problem. So there are traditional ways that these uh, food items uh, could be preserved for later use. The uh, value addition to these uh, food types, what are the different kinds of things that can be made out of it? that adds value to it. And of course, the, um, the, um, the preparation and uh, the recipes. For, for these uh, food leaflets, I have chosen to uh, just to uh, briefly touch on uh, this 19 in all year. As you can see, the uh, food leaflets. If you, by the way, this, both these documents, they're available in the SPC digital library. They're very colorful, um, very exciting to read and to note, and just to have a copy of it in your library or for your personal use. Um, I'm gonna just talk about uh, two food items here, taro and fish. So when I talk about taro and fish, it sounds uh, familiar, but for us in the Pacific, uh, many of us can identify to this. Uh, when you talk about the Pacific Island people, there's only two things that we relate to more. It's our land and our sea. We are covered by the Pacific Ocean. So to us, the land is very important and the sea as well, because that is where we get our, um, our, our food from, from the sea and from the land where we plant our own uh, vegetable crops, our own uh, crops, uh, staple crops for, for food. Um, in the Pacific, uh, our staple crops are taro, we have yam, we have breadfruit, we have cassava. So for this, um, for this uh, food leaflet, again, um, the taro is one of the main uh, staple crops in the Pacific. Um, there are different names to many different island, uh, Pacific Island countries. We call it Ndalo here in Fiji. In some countries, they are known as uh, Aba or Aro or Ta'aro. Um, that's how this food uh, uh, crop is known. Uh, in the Pacific, uh, taro itself, there are 72 varieties of taro in the Pacific. And there are four major, four major um, types of uh, taro. And uh, the four main types, um, uh, the one that mostly grown in many Pacific Island countries is what we call the true taro. Okay? That is the one that we grow more, that we use in our cultural um, activities uh, the most. In some uh, atoll island countries like uh, Kiribati, for example, they use another type, which is called the swamp taro 
or here in Fiji, it's usually planted where the, the land is so soggy. Eh? It's large, big uh, yams, big uh, taro plants. But for the true taro, it's um, there are varieties, like I said, 72 varieties of it available across the Pacific and the different um, uh, presentation, how it can be cooked. It can be cooked either boiled, to taste nice when it boil, you can just uh, scrape off the dirt on the on the taro and with the skin just to um, retain the nutrient on the skin, you boil it. It can be cooked in the earth oven, what we call the lovo. Uh, likewise, our fish, uh, they're very nutritious, uh, full of vitamins um, that we um, that can just be baked um, on the on the on the uh, on the beach as you come out of the waters. Uh, some even eat it raw raw fish and uh, boiled and uh, mixed in coconut milk and other ways that we Pacific Islands can uh, prepare our, um, our meals through this, um, through the, this uh, type of uh, food. They are very rich in uh, minerals, um, calcium and vitamins A and C for taro, uh, rich in carbohydrate. Uh, the leaves and the stock of taro are also eaten. The leaves is what we make uh, palusami out of it. Okay, we put coconut milk and you make palusami and even the stock, you can take out the skin of the stock and boil it in hot uh, boiling water and um, slice it with a fork and uh, chili and lemon and you have a nice uh, nutritious meal. Um, yeah, that is, uh, that is uh, the two um, uh, leaflets uh, that um, I uh, bring to attention to us this morning that will now make uh, more interest in us uh, about this uh, particular book. I remember while uh, growing up, um, uh, when we usually have a Sunday meal, uh, if we don't have fish as a meal on a Sunday to the family, especially to my parents and my grandparents, that is not a Sunday meal at all. There has got to be fish. If there's no fish in the meal on a Sunday, um, we'd go to our uncle next door and say, do you have fish? Can we exchange fish, uh, your fish for, for our chicken? Uh, that is how we'll really love our fish. So um, likewise uh, for, for, for Tero. The second, um, the second book I wanna share with us today, uh, let me see, uh, can I do this? Uh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, I've got that on. Oh, there we go. This is the, this, the second item, again, published by SPC, the Public Health Division. It's called the... Um, the... Uh, Edible leaves of the Pacific. Edible leaves of the Pacific. So the first, uh, um, the first food leaflet it talks of all about the crops, the fruits, and uh, the sea. And uh, this one was published last year. Edible leaves of the Pacific. Um, just going through this uh, this uh, um, document uh, the other day, I, I then discovered that even um, uh, let's see here. Popo leaves, the young uh, popo leaves, they can be made into a dish. They, they give us the, uh, the um, nutritious uh, value of this, um, of this, um, leaf, this uh, types of leaves for meals and uh, how they can be cooked. Uh, I often hear, especially my, my, my wife, she often said to me, you know, when you go buy vegetables, you look for the greener, the dark green vegetables, because the darker the color, the more nutritious it is. Okay. And that is what um, the um, public health division team have come up with this because dark green leaves, they give, they give us good source of vitamins, vitamin A, C, and K, and uh, as well as minerals um, of iron, calcium, and uh, magnesium, and uh, that, that, um, that uh, really helps in our dietary uh, consumption. And edible leaves also are very low in uh, carbohydrates, but they are very rich in fiber. Uh, it also gives us the, um, the uh, how to prepare and uh, cook this, uh, this, um, these leaves. Um, I, then I came across these breadfruit leaves. I only know that, no, we just take the breadfruit, either we love it or boil it or just open baked it in open fire. Uh, but uh, eating, um, having a meal made out of a young uh, breadfruit leaves, you know, I said to myself, well, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try, and, uh, try this out uh, for myself and see how it tastes. Uh, all in all, 
what I'm talking about today in this publication um, published by SPC, these two leaflets, uh, why, why is this an important resource to, to us here at the SPC? And for what purpose? What is, uh, what is its uh, relevance? Why is it interesting and unique? You know, taking the Pacific, um, taking the Pacific, we are so much, this is what our forefathers used to have. And uh, when they do, we hear, I don't know about the history of health history in the Pacific, we hear very little of what we know now as NCDs. Okay? Um, because they, they love their fruits, they love their vegetables. They do their, 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 their open fire of uh, cooking uh, uh, crops and other earth oven or lovers of cooking dalo and the breadfruit into the, into the earth oven. So I guess it's a, probably a project by the public health division. It's just an awareness to us specific calendars again, uh, here in the Pacific and those of those that are uh, elsewhere uh, all over the world, how important is our, our dietary consumption of the food that we have around us, how healthy it is, and how best that we still uh, could resort to this, um, to this type of uh, uh, food that will help us live a healthy lifestyle. So it creates an awareness about the richness, uh, the value of this locally grown food. It also creates an awareness and gives us as Pacific Islanders, uh, I'm talking about Pacific Islanders, a sense of pride in our own local production and uh, the, um, the, and how we maintain and sustain this, these uh, food items. And uh, of course, the nutritional aspect of it. It gives us some sense of responsibility as well. You know, just by going through these uh, leaflets, uh, know that we can continue to plant this in our backyard gardens, in um, you know, you know, big uh, uh, community gardens uh, of our own health in combating uh, NCDs. Uh, also, like I said earlier, it gives us a sense of pride, a specific island, islanders, you know, to some unique island food, uh, um, uh, food um, recipes and uh, style that we have that do provide nutrition. Uh, but also one thing it does, it makes us stay connected very, very strongly to our cultural heritage. You know, when we make presentation of food, we can know here in Fiji, when they make presentation of food in a, in a wedding or in a death or in, a, um, in any other big functions, we can know where is this, which, which part of the country this is coming from, which province, which village. So it connects us. So our food connects us also to our cultural identity. So uh, yeah, these uh, leaflets um, of the Pacific are designed or I, I, I guess are designed by the Pacific Health, uh, uh, health team to be culturally, culturally relevant to all the, um, uh, the groups of people here in the Pacific, the Melanesian, the Micronesian, and the Polynesian uh, people of the Pacific that we can identify with our food system and at the same time be causes of our, how we live our lives um, uh, nutritionally in our diet and how we, how we tend to look after our life, uh, uh, public health uh, for that matter. So yeah, that's um, one of the items that, um, two items that I wanna share with us that's available in a digital library that um, I think that is relevant to, very, very relevant to us Pacific Islands people and our people all over the world. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, Vanaka, Samu, that was an amazing um, presentation. And I'm looking forward to using the recipes because I'm getting very hungry now. <laughs> I'll stop sharing this. Um, just had a few comments that are coming through. Uh, Vanaka, Samu, interested to read more about is um, they are doing some research on lost traditional food. Um, some more thank yous. Um, I've also got another question coming from Ulu Afese, one of our team members. Uh, with climate change being a big issue for Pacific people and with science being quite technical, are there resources made by SPC that make scientific information accessible? It might be a question to all of you. <clears throat> Shall I repeat it? Um, yes. Uh... For all climate change, all climate change documents, actually, since uh, the, they have created uh, this very uh, special uh, division in SPC, uh, they're all online. Uh, 
on the digital library and uh, uh and i i i don't know uh about um I can conf I cannot confirm about the PDH, the Pacific Data Hub, but uh, PDH can harvest uh, data from uh, the digital library too, so they should be in here too. But maybe Emily, Emily could, uh, could answer. Yeah, it's a it's a really good question, Ulu. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. There is certainly a growing and some might say desperate need uh, to have more resources about climate change that are accessible and that are not too technical and scientific. We do have some in the digital library already and um, I encourage you to, to go in and have a look at the specific climate change documents. In particular, there are a couple of um, uh, children's stories, the, the Pooh and Midi uh, stories, which illustrates uh, climate change and the impacts of climate change and the importance of resilience uh, for Pacific people specifically in the face of climate change. Um, but this is certainly a, an area where we are going to do a lot more uh, work. Uh, and where also our communications colleagues uh, are doing a lot of work in terms of uh, promoting uh, resources uh, to, to all audiences, so not just to our technical uh, and scientific specialists, but also to children, uh, to the general public, uh, and, and to people, communities who are looking to, um, let's say, climate change proof their villages and, and their communities, because in some cases uh, that's becoming a really big issue in some of the remote islands uh, around the Pacific. Well, thank you. Um, just for, if anybody would like to ask a question through audio, um, just raise, push the raise your hand button and Tim will let you in. Um, while we're waiting, if you guys want to muster up your questions, I'll just quickly show um, how you can access some of the resources, but also um, I think some of the videos that you've been producing are really um, helpful. Um, kind of showing the effects of climate change and how our Pacific people are being resilient. I'll just quickly share my screen um, and show you the website and how you can access some of these videos. Uh, Taputu, do you want me to present my um, resource after that? Oh no, actually you, you can go. Or do you want me to do no, this no. one first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. And then you can show everyone how to get into all of yeah. them. Um, okay, I will just quickly share my screen again with everyone. Share. Um, I just oh. move to presentation uh, mode. One second. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, yeah, the final resource. Uh, I won't take too much time, Taputu, because I know that you you want to show us how to get into the uh, digital Pacific and use it, but. Um, the resource that I wanted to show is really building on the, the themes that um, uh, Stephanie and Samu have, have mentioned in their presentations. Uh, diversity, that's, that's a massive part of the work that we do at SPC and the reason that SPC exists. And last year, um, we decided to republish and revise our cultural etiquette guide to the Pacific. It was originally published 15 years ago to help SPC staff um, work in Pacific communities around the region. And uh, last year we sat down with the social development uh, division at SPC and uh, wanted to uh, create a new guide that was not only relevant for SPC staff, but that was also relevant for all staff who might be working in the Pacific region. We work a lot with crop organizations and um, with partner agencies and donors. And so we felt that this resource could be more general and could be more relevant for everyone who might uh, pass through the region. Um, we also felt it was important because uh, even though uh, all of us come from the Pacific, um, you know, some are from Fiji, uh, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, New Zealand, uh, that doesn't mean that we, we know specifically what things are going to be like in, for example, the Federated States of Micronesia or Guam or French Polynesia. The region is diverse, it is vibrant, and uh, so it was important for us to create a resource that could be used uh, globally. We also have staff at SBC uh, all the way away from, from the Netherlands, from Canada, 
Um, I think Liberia is, is one of the more um, remote ones at the moment, Madagascar. So uh, it's also important that staff coming into the region uh, have a resource to use uh, when traveling uh, around. And I know we haven't done a lot of travel in the last two years, but uh, fingers crossed we will be able to get back out there um, in the field uh, sometime soon. So it, it very much has that kind of lonely planet guidebook feel. Um, it opens with a, a comprehensive map of the region. Um, I hope you can see that there, just move that out of the way, uh, with uh, specific EEZs, uh, which is very relevant for those of us who work in fisheries and geosciences. And then we, we move through, sorry, the, the other part of the map is here. If you actually have the physical book in front of you, it's like an open opening flap um, so that you can see the, the full map. Uh, we have a little bit of a key at the beginning of the book, um, which illustrates specific symbols to look out for as you move through the book. And these are uh, present throughout all of the country profiles. Um, so you see the, the Kava bowl here. Um, you see what to, you know, what to look out for if you're looking um, for appropriate dress or uh, appropriate greetings uh, when you are traveling. Just moving through, uh, you will also notice uh, here that we are actually covering what we call the cultural Pacific. So uh, we feature the 26 uh, member countries and territories of SPC, but we also cover a couple of the uh, islands that are not actually SPC members. Rapa Nui, Easter Island, um, uh, Hawaii, who is represented by the United States of America, um, but has their own entry here. And then also Norfolk Island represented by Australia, but also has its own entry here as well. Um, at the beginning, we have some beautiful pictures which are taken from the SPC uh, photo archives. And uh, a lot of those have been taken at the Festival of Pacific Arts. And they illustrate some of the concepts and, and some of the um, uh, ceremonies and, and protocols that you will find throughout the book. So if you're looking for a specific reference point, you might be able to find it here in, in the photos. There's a couple more here and uh, they are all captioned. And then uh, we move into uh, a general overview of, of each of the, the elements, as I mentioned. So um, what each of these areas cover uh, and, and what can be found. Commonly used terms are also addressed. So things like kava, betelnat, lava lava, uh, toddy, words that you might hear uh, across multiple regions or countries um, and are used interchangeably. And then we get to the countries themselves. So just as, a, as an example, uh, the country is shown with a, a comprehensive map. You will see the capital and the, the main um, cities, as well as the main uh, geographic elements, so harbors and island groups. And then there's a couple of uh, facts pulled from the text, just to highlight if you're flipping through and, and need a couple of quick uh, talking points. Uh, there's uh, a short introduction to greetings and farewells, uh, things that you might need for short. Um, and then there is a comprehensive background, uh, not only about the culture, but also about the, the, um, the, the politics and about the, the makeup and the governance structure within the, the country. There's also a little bit about the language. And then as you move through, you can see that the various areas are highlighted here. And um, I think it's really interesting going through, you can see there's a lot of points of commonality, um, uh, but there's also some points of, of difference as well. So you'll see in most countries, there is some kind of uh, kava ceremony um, and this has different names, but there are slightly different protocols around the kava ceremony. So for example, if you were to go to a kava ceremony in, or an ava ceremony in Samoa, um, you are expected to, to make a speech. So the general uh, recommendation there is uh, don't drink too much kava before you're supposed to talk um, uh, and make sure that you can still kind of string a couple of words together. I know the first time I drank kava, my lips went completely numb. And so uh, I would have been a useful, <laughs> a useless, sorry, a speech giver on that occasion. Um, there's also a couple of uh, other uh, points to note, some, some commonalities. Uh, as Samu mentioned, you know, the land is incredibly important uh, to communities throughout the Pacific, and almost all of the entries will mention 
uh, in uh, the out and about section that uh, authority to access land is required from the tribe or, or from the tribu as they call it here in New Caledonia um, or from the, the village chief before accessing the land. And that's, that's a mark of respect. And in some cases, you know, a small donation or a small gift is also required. Another point of commonality, uh, if we head down to uh, Norfolk Island, for example, we'll just scroll through, you can see some of the, the maps here throughout, which have been beautifully illustrated. So if we go to Norfolk Island, um, sorry, there we go, um, hats are, are really popular uh, on uh, Norfolk Island, but they shouldn't be worn indoors. And that contrasts to Fiji, where it is polite to remove your hat as you pass through a village. However, hats are very commonly worn throughout the Pacific and can be decorated, especially with flowers and, and fibers and, and, and all kinds of things uh, for special occasions. Um, in terms of the, the meals as well, I think food is always an important point because this is very much a, a shared commonality uh, between all of the, the, the different islands. Um, uh, here we have uh, Palau. So there's a couple of different rules here in Samoa. If you finish your meal completely, it is a sign that you are still hungry and you will be offered more food. So watch out if you don't plan to eat anymore or you're already full, um, try to leave a bit on your plate. Um, uh, that contrasts with Guam, where um, you have to watch out for the hierarchy of, of food serving. So as a guest, you will be uh, served first. But in fact, uh, you must wait for the elders to, to start eating first before you can then uh, also uh, eat. Um, it seems to be the other way around um, in uh, Palau, where it is common for the chiefs to be served and to start first, followed by matriarchs, and then uh, followed by the rest of the, the, the gathering. Um, and then you have a couple of places like, uh, like PNG, where you should accept food, um, but you are not expected to eat it at all. You can take it away with you if you're not hungry. Um, and in Fiji, where it is very common for a stranger uh, to be invited to eat with a family or to eat with uh, a gathering um, as a way of, of welcoming someone to, to the community or, or to an event. Um, and this might feel a bit strange for people who are not familiar with this, with the Fijian hospitality, um, but it, it's very much a part of, of, of Fijian culture. Another thing that jumped out at me when I was going through was uh, eating with hands is very common and acceptable in many places. Um, and some countries are even more specific about which hand and whether it's with the fingers or with the whole hand as well. Nui is a good example of this. So lots of little nuances and tips uh, to help uh, um, travelers and to help staff uh, working in the region. Uh, so yeah, that was my, uh, my little uh, edition that was uh, published by the SBC publishing team uh, last year, and it's available via the digital library, um, and uh, it's also available in a physical copy, so um, if anyone is interested in having one of those, they can contact us directly. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emily. That was really insightful. And to see what the commonalities are between the Pacific, but also the, the, the differences as well. Um, I think we'll go into questions. Um, Tim, did we have anyone that would like to say an audio question? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I was just going to, I've texted uh, Savannah. Savana Siva, but I'm not sure if they haven't responded. So I'll just, uh, Savana Siva, if you wanted to ask your question of Samu, um, oh, yeah. just uh, open up and uh, if you'd like to share. Just to unmute you. There we go. Yo, bula. Bula, bula. <laughs> Sorry, is this one of the questions I posed? I was just asking. Uh, yes, it was your question for Samuela. So you're in the chat now, so you can ask him uh, yeah. um, directly. <laughs> right. No, just that I'm doing a food system, uh, traditional food system research, and I want the research to be embedded into the curricula. 
Uh, I find uh, what was presented this morning by some which really what we want to use. And that is why I'm asking, if you would use your data, do you need to make a formal request for the use of data or what would be the uh, procedure of the SPC? Okay, uh, maybe I'll uh, answer first and then Emily can, um, can take it on from there. Uh, if you want a uh, for service uh, question, uh, you are most welcome to use our data as long as it's part of your research work, as uh, long as SPC is acknowledged in your, in your, in your work, because uh, all the items there are copyrighted by and the copyright rest with SPC. You, you can use that. It's available in the digital library, so it's available to everyone to extract the data, to use the data in whatever way they want but as long as uh, SPC is acknowledged in your research. Maybe uh, probably Emily can, uh, can uh, talk further on that. Thank you. Emily. No, very well uh, explained, uh, Samu, that's uh, correct. And I'll just go one step further and say that uh, if you are interested in um, uh, translating our resources, for example, into a Pacific language. Most of our resources are already available in English and French, but I know there's a lot of interest in translating resources for Pacific communities. Um, then uh, you're welcome to uh, reach out to me and um, all we do is set up a small publishing agreement um, and just acknowledging that the copyright uh, rests with SBC, but that you have permission to, to translate and use it. Otherwise, everything that Samu says stands. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just a bit on the research for Kanzing. Uh, uh, is that uh, what we have found out that the, uh, the shift of our younger generation into uh, into new food systems was because of uh, there's nothing available as an alternative for that. So cultural standardization and cultural relation came comes into place, and they have no no alternative. So our aim is to provide our children younger generation and also know our food system, so then we can able to. Uh, 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 talk about the uh, NCD problems. So right now, we, we are putting our finger on NCD problems, but we are not uh, providing uh, a, a pathway for them to move away from, from what they are right now. So they go back to McDonald's, they go back to Kentucky uh, chicken and all, all those stuff, as snacks as their, as their daily diet. So that is basically where we're coming from. And I hope you go to the publication agreement with the USPC would give us a, 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 an, an overarching. Uh, a platform where we can be able to uh, uh, pursue our objectives. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just let me uh, comment again. Uh, Savia, thank you so much for your interest. Uh, if you in Suva, the SPC uh, library in Suva is based in Narere. You can, uh, just because of COVID protocols, you can uh, give me a call or email me. I'll uh, give you my email address. And then uh, we can take it on from there. You can come and have a look at some of the resources based on around this uh, subject that's available here in, a, in our library. Awesome. I think we've got one more question um, from Jean. Um, not sure if you want to do an audio or, not, or else I can just read it. I'll just read it. Eh? A question about Fizpak born in 1972 in Fiji. 12 editions all around the Oceania, the last 50 years, organised with help of SBC. The resources are all around. Any programme about Fizpak journey until Hawaii 2024? Um, Fizpak is a part of history that could be part of a roaming exhibition. Um, do our panelists know about fees, Pat? Um, I can make a small comment. Um, as you know, FISPAC was postponed until 2024 in Hawaii. I believe the website is still uh, live and active. So any updates that come through between now and 2024 will be on the website. So please keep that bookmarked. Um, in terms of the, the content and the agenda, SPC is actually finalizing uh, with partners its uh, regional culture strategy um, for the next decade. Our, our most recent strategy actually um, kind of expired in 2020. Uh, and uh, so we are, are building the new strategy that will be released early next year um, at the same time as the SPC strategic plan, um, which is also built for 10 more years until 2000. Uh, 
2031, sorry. Um, and I assume that after the strategy has been uh, released and publicized that there will be uh, further work that goes then into the agenda and building the agenda based on that strategic document. So, so keep, a, keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Um, if there's any more questions, I'm um, just write it in the chat. We might have time for one more. Um, while we're doing that, I'll quickly share my screen to show how you can access some of the digital resources from Pacific Community. There we go. Um, can everyone see the, the website? Cool. So this is our website, which is Digital Pacific, Pacific spelled P-A-S-I-F-I-K dot org. Um, so this is a resource where you can get um, information and resources from around the Pacific um, from different organizations. So you can um, search by location or by the search bar. But I just want to quickly show you how you can access our content partners, which uh, Pacific Community is one of them. So if you click on here, it will take you to the content partner page. Um, and if you scroll down, Pacific Community have 1,480 records and items. So if you click on this page, it will take you directly to their web page where it has a bit of background where one of their locations are and also their websites. So um, this is a good way that you can start um, filtering. Um, so they've got mostly videos. Um, you can also search by location um, and some of their collections as well. So um, yeah, some really interesting videos that they've produced um, that might be able to convey about um, uh, climate change and the effects that it's having on the Pacific people. Um, and just to show you also our, um, once this recording has been finished, it will also go up on our YouTube page. Where you can um, catch some of the other webinars that we've done with some of the other content partners and organizations. So yeah, that's what I just quickly wanted to show. So you can um, explore the website and also Pacific Communities um, resources. Cool, I think we've just got um, no more questions. I think we're ready to wrap up. Tim? Yeah, um, thank you, Tabatu. Um, and thank you to Emily, to Stephanie, and to Samu. Um, and I just want to say, I was listening, I was just really reflecting, Samu, on your uh, passion and heart for the topic. Uh, initially, it was just, you know, it gets presented as a leaflet, as a library, but what you brought was a real heart to um, what that leaflet represents, which is, as you're exactly right, the cultural heritage of the Pacific, which is bound up in uh, how we make food, how we connect with food, how we take care of the land and how we um, utilize the land. And, and Emily, your piece around that cultural etiquette, I was actually just texting um, Ulu, who's Samoan, uh, saying, oh, that's good intel to know about if I have to go to Sa Samoa with the <laughs> and sit down with, uh, with the Tano ball. But um, yeah, it's um, yeah really lovely to hear both of those aspects and, and just to acknowledge your Stephanie, the, the heart you have for SPC and the long heritage and history of it. And I um, appreciate each of those items that you shared because I think the, you know, from, you know, my learning and for my, um, you know, I wasn't aware of very much of SPC and what it stood for and, and even the library even before we started this project and I've learned more today from each of you. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, as Tapatu said, we will um, edit this up and put it up online and be shared. Um, apologize to those people watching on Facebook. We had some technical errors with our linking with the actual Facebook event. So um, we'll do that proper apology on social media. But um, thank you so much for joining us uh, from uh, New Caledonia and from uh, Fiji. Uh, thank you to all of us who joined us in the uh, Zoom chat as well as on Facebook. Um, thank you for your comments and questions as well. Um, did any of you have any final words before we close up? I know it's lunchtime, so I think I'll say bon appétit. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you and bon appétit, everyone. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Atim and Taputu, for uh, having us. Yeah, thanks so much. Excellent. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care wherever you are, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Vanaka. <laughs> Bye. Mama, me call him you all, Sam. Long God, you must stand.
the type of two we're going to have to work harder at colour coordinating our, coordinating our backgrounds with digital Pacific teams being shown <laughs> by the Pacific community blend of backgrounds there. <laughs> we need a cool background. Hey, my island is cool background. Kandavu there looks beautiful. Right. <laughs> okay, let's start. <laughs>